I never really believed in the whole being watched sensation until it happened to me. Until I had to live through an event that made me feel the terror of it all. I'm a college student. I work nights at a convenience store near my campus. It's nothing glorious. It's a very thankless job in an old and beaten down little store that sells as much alcohol and candy as we do gas. Of course, the store has to add to the creepy ambience, right? The lights flicker, door out back makes this grating creak noise that makes the hair on my arm stand every single time it opens. Other than that, the store is deafeningly silent. Minus the soda fountain sometimes making strange noises. It's a job that pays, and that's about the end of it. You'd think that the scariest thing that you'd have to deal with at these kinds of jobs would be the occasional drunk or irate customer. Doubly so if the customer is both drunk and you won't sell him alcohol, so he becomes irate. It's the den of the night, so really you wouldn't think that anything creepy would actually occur. Plus, we're near the school and close to a cop shop. People know not to do anything stupid since we can get a cruiser there in about three and a half minutes. I would know as I timed it. I once had to call on a drunk guy trying to drive out of my lot. By the time I'm at the middle of my shift, the world is asleep, so really I just get to sit there and wait for the morning to come so that I can go home. There was one night where, as I said earlier, things shifted from normal to creepy. I was sitting there waiting for my shift to end when an older guy walked into the store. I looked up to greet him, customer service and whatnot, and when I looked out the window past him, I saw this random guy standing outside. He was across the street just behind the streetlight, and with how the light was glowing down, I couldn't see his face under his hoodie. There was something about how he was just standing there that was making me feel genuinely unsettled. He wasn't just there for the hell of it. He wasn't waiting for the bus. It was like he was deliberately standing there and watching the store. Watching me. He didn't have a dog. He didn't have a phone out or anything. It was just him in the night. Now, I'm a pretty big dude. I'm six foot two a little over 230 and not easily spooked. But the way this guy was just staring in my direction without moving was seriously freaky. After I rang up the old guy, I sat back down on my stool and just watched him as he watched me. Part of me was thinking that he was going to do something, like run at the store, pull out a gun, just something that would justify my terror of him, but he didn't. After about an hour and a half of him just standing there and staring, he took a step forward and then turned left and walked away, down the sidewalk. No lie, it was a relief to watch him walk away. But, of course, that wasn't the end. The next night that I worked, around two in the morning I looked up and sure enough he was standing there again. At first, I was mentally certain that it was just another guy standing there. That there was no way in hell this dude was going to spend a couple more hours in the middle of the night just watching the store for fun. But after I stared at him for a couple of minutes, I could tell that he was wearing the same shorts and same hoodie. And I knew it was him for certain. I tried to shake it off, tried to laugh at myself, and thought, Wow, Jason... You're getting paranoid. But this eerie feeling was settling in my gut, and it would not go away. Something was off. Way off. So, I did what I think anyone would do if they were in my position, working at three in the morning behind the counter of a giant robbery target. I called the police. I explained that there was a man that had been loitering around the store, and that I would appreciate an officer to just maybe check him out, or maybe just come to the store and make sure nothing happened. It was a bit of an exaggeration, he wasn't technically loitering around the store, but it wasn't wholly untrue. They said that they would send a unit to the store to check in. 
I thanked her and hung up. That's when things went from freaky to, holy crap, what is happening? As soon as I hung up from the dispatcher, I looked up and watched as this man reached into his pocket, pulled out his phone and placed it to his ear. Then, right on cue, the phone to the store started ringing. I was still in this weird mentality of denial. I was thinking that there was absolutely no way that it was this guy, that the timing was just a big coincidence. I picked it up and answered saying the name of the store. The voice on the other end immediately cut in and said, I hope you have a good night, Jason. The voice was low and quiet, and the call ended as they finished their statement, which to me made it feel like a threat. When the call ended, the man on the other side of the street put his phone away and immediately started walking away from his post under the streetlight. I stood there watching him walk, holding the phone receiver in my hand, not sure what this was at this point. I didn't answer the phone saying my name, so him referring to me by name was... unsettling. It was entirely possible that he'd been in the store at some point and interacted with me, and I just never noticed it was him, but it was still freaky. After about 10 minutes, the officers finally pulled up, which was a disappointing response time, but I guess it was just a loitering call. I explained the whole thing to them, and then told them immediately after calling them that the man called me, and told them what he'd said. They seemed to want to take it seriously, but I think at the same time this guy hadn't done anything actually illegal, so they had to just say that they would drive around and see if they could find him. And that was it. I finished out my shift, thankful to not see the man out there for the rest of the night. This wasn't the last event, but it was the last one that happened at my work. What happened after this is the most recent thing to happen, but is also the most terrifying, albeit the least eventful. About two days after the night where I called the cops, I was at home getting ready for work and whatnot, and when I went out to leave, I noticed that there was a slip of paper under my windshield wiper. At first, I thought it was a ticket, or a warning for parking there or something, which was confusing, but it was the most logical explanation. But when I pulled the page out and looked at it, I was horrified. On the page, right there in black and white, was a written note that said, I'll be around, Jason. I'm not scared of the police. When I read this, the world felt like it was spinning. What the hell had I done to this person? Why were they latching on to me like this? I really didn't know what to do. Should I call the cops? Was this just an empty threat? Was this some kind of stalker that was waiting to escalate the situation? I did contact the police, and when they showed up, I explained the situation that had taken place at work, which thankfully did add a bit of credence to my story. And then I showed them the note that I had just found. They thought it was freaky, and they agreed that this could be a weird stalker situation, but there wasn't much to go on beyond the person just being creepy. After a bit more talking about things, they basically gave me an open case number and told me that, if I saw this person at all, or if they contacted me, to contact them immediately and this would be an open investigation into potential stalking. Fortunately, this is where the story ends, for now. It's been two months, and I haven't heard from this person nor seen them since then. I don't know if that's a good thing, or if they're waiting for me to let my guard down, but it's definitely scaring the hell out of me. In these past two months, I've been feeling like I'm being watched, being followed, and I swear that I am jumping at literally every shadow. I've kind of started secluding myself, only spending time at work and home, not going out into public just in case. If anyone has any suggestions, I am open to them, so please do let me know what I should do. I am armed, so if this person tries anything at home, I can do something about it. 
but I can't open carry, so out in public the only thing I can hope to protect me is the fact that this is out in the open. In the end, I think I'm safe, since it has been so long, but of course I am scared of the possibility of them coming back. It's a terrifying feeling, and I may just be being paranoid, but if that paranoia saves me, then so be it, I guess. Hey Raven, I wanted to share the story with you and your audience, as it's one of those stories that is creepy, but can also be used as educational, as you always say. It's one of the only times I've ever felt scared for my life, honestly. And it's been a few years now, and thankfully nothing else has happened, minus this one event. To start, it was a pretty good night. I'd gone out with a couple of friends, I hadn't been drinking or anything, we had just been out having dinner as a small group and went out to see a movie. It was a bit of a silly night, but it was a good time. I wanted to stay the night with them all as they were staying at one of their houses, but I had to work in the morning, so I unfortunately had to drive home after we were all done with the night's events. I was in pretty high spirits on the drive home, though. I had my windows down, my music was up, and I was breathing in the night air. It wasn't a terribly far drive, like half an hour or so, so I was just coasting on autopilot through most of it. I assumed it would be uneventful, until I was heading down one road about ten minutes from my house. I was driving as I had been, and down one of the side roads, there was a car that was going the opposite direction. Nothing scary about that, people drive on roads. They passed me, and after they did, I happened to glance up into my rearview mirror for whatever reason, and I watched them slam their brakes and start into a K-turn. Then, they got behind me. Now, I thought that maybe they had intentions on doing this anyways, and it was just bad timing or something, but... They sped up pretty quickly to get behind me, which was a tad alarming. After a couple seconds of them driving behind me, they kicked on their flashing lights and my stomach dropped. I looked down at my speedometer. I wasn't speeding. I hadn't done anything stupid or illegal as far back as I could remember. My headlights were all in working order. I had no idea why they would be pulling me over. I thought about the situation for a moment, and even started preparing myself to pull over at the first available shoulder. The road that I was on didn't have a shoulder, so I couldn't have pulled over there. After thinking about why I would be being pulled over, something clicked in my head. Specifically about the car. I didn't see any markings on the car that indicated it was a cop car. The tag that I saw as it passed was not a government tag which is required on unmarked vehicles. Plus, the unmarked cars where I live are usually SUVs, which this was not. As I started piecing the thoughts together and thinking about the whole thing, I realized something else. The light that was flashing was just a single blue light, and it looked like it was on his dashboard. My state uses full light bars, blue, white, and red, and they're typically on top of the cars. I think that this was even implemented as a requirement at some point, but I can't say for sure. As all of these pieces started falling into place, it occurred to me what this was, most likely. It was not an actual officer. With how the light was set up, the lack of markings, this was an impersonator, and they were trying to pull me over for god knows what nefarious reason. At this point, I decided I would take a chance. I figured that I would drive to the police station and, if this was a real officer, they would just tack on a possible evading charge that I would of course fight. And it was going to suck if they were real, but I was pretty certain that they weren't. I kept on down the road, they kept on tailgating me, and we made a few turns through the town. The person kept right at my bumper. 
and they kept the light on the whole time. The further we drove, the more I was absolutely convinced this was a fake. Not once did he go over the speaker saying to pull over. Not once did he hit a siren. He did hit his horn a few times, but that was even more suspicious. I kept him going for a while until I was close to the police station. I turned down the road that the police station was on, and then hit my signal to indicate that I was pulling into the parking lot of said station. As soon as I hit my signal, he got over into the oncoming lane and took off down the road past me, going way too fast down the road, and obviously trying to make a break for it. There was an officer that was outside the station just getting out of his cruiser that saw the whole thing happen. When I pulled in, he ran over to me and asked me a couple of questions about the car. I told him a really quick summary of what had happened. He told me to go in and let the front desk know the situation so they could get a report, and he jumped back in his cruiser taking off with lights and sirens going. I did what he asked. I went in and told the officer at the desk that I was followed by someone pretending to be a cop. He took my statement very seriously, thankfully and I heard him get on the radio to the officer that had taken off after him. I then made a formal statement, detailing all that I could remember about the car, the location where he started following me, what I was doing, etc. After a while, the original officer came back to the station and I spoke with him about it too. He, unfortunately, was not able to find him but he told me that he got a good look at the car and confirmed my statement as being what he saw too. He also told me that I did the right thing, that me going to the station instead of stopping may have literally saved my life. He also informed me that, in cases like this, where I think it may be an impersonator, that I should dial 911 and confirm that the officer is legitimate, and that the dispatcher will have all the information to confirm it. So, this was an educational situation for me, one that was terrifying because I almost did stop. If he'd been a bit more convincing with his props, specifically the light, I likely would have, because I wouldn't have thought twice. Hopefully the story can help someone out there to avoid any situation like the one I was in. I know that most officers out there may take offense to you not stopping right away, but if you aren't feeling safe, you should at least call 911 to confirm that you are being pulled over by someone legitimate. Of course, if you're being followed by a fully marked cruiser with full light bars and sirens, odds are it's legitimate, and you probably shouldn't push your luck. Either way, that's my story, and it's one that has stuck with me for these past couple of years because it really was scary how close I was to something that was potentially incredibly dangerous. I wouldn't normally share this story on the internet, but I'm going to go ahead and send it to you with a request to remain anonymous just in case. Honestly, after what happened, I kind of feel like it's necessary because it was one of those situations that others should know about. I live in a fairly large apartment complex in a part of town that is questionable. The community slash complex is fine overall, but the location is sketchy. We've had a string of car and apartment break-ins over the past year or two. Because of this increase in crime, the community has installed a gate at the front that is closed after 10 p.m., and they hired a couple of guards that are stationed in the lot overnight. For the most part, it's actually been kind of nice to have the security guards on the property, as it does make me feel a lot safer. At least, until they hired a guy named Jeb. I'm not one to judge people based on things like names, but... When we got the email from the office saying that they had hired a man named Jeb, I didn't have high hopes, that's all. My initial impression didn't get any better when I finally met him. He was a big guy. Not fat, just really bulky. 
When I first met him, I tried my best to be polite and to say hi to him. I work in customer service, so I have that customer service smile. And when I said hi to him, he sort of just grunted. After that, I made it a point to just not talk to him, as that was, one, rude, and two, kind of creepy. Who grunts when someone says hi? Anyways, I avoided him and didn't acknowledge him at all, so he pretty much just left my mind altogether. My friend Jessica was the one that initially noticed that something was off about him. Jessica doesn't live in the complex, but she'd been staying with me for a couple of weeks because she was having issues in her personal life. I've known her since we were in preschool, so I had no issue offering my couch to her when she asked. She was in the laundry room of the building, doing her laundry as one does, and at one point, Jeb walked into the laundry room. The laundry room in our building has the washer and dryers, but also has all of the tenants' storage units. It's a small and sort of cramped room, but it has enough space for one to sit if they need to. And that's about it. She was sitting there, waiting for the ten or so minutes to pass by, and just scrolling on her phone when Jeb walked in. He looks at her, and then walks past her to the other side of the hallway-like area, and leans against the wall. He then pulls out his phone and just starts scrolling, but is very clearly not actually reading anything. After the buzzer goes off on the washer, Jessica gets up to change them over to the dryer, and Jeb pushes off the wall and slowly walks towards her. She notices him, but doesn't want to make an issue. She's not on the lease here and technically shouldn't be using the facilities until he gets too close. From what she told me, he was uncomfortably close to her, and just looking over her shoulder as she was moving her clothes. At one point, she pulls out a pair of underwear and moves it, and she hears him say, <laughs> Nice, under his breath. She shivered, but just finished moving it all, put the change in for the dryer, and turned around, only to be met with him standing less than arm's length away from her. As soon as she turned around, he smirked and said, Hey, can I get your phone number? She was shocked at how brazen he was, and she told him that she wasn't interested. She said that he chuckled at this response and then said, You live in Unit 203, right? Which is my unit where she was staying. She asked him why he was bothering her, and he just said, I'm just doing my normal rounds, you know making sure you're not up to something suspicious. At this point, she said that she'd had enough, so she told him that he was being creepy with his comments, and that it was not appropriate to ask her for her phone number, and then ask which unit she lived in. She told him that if he kept bothering her and being inappropriate, she was going to report him to the office. He just laughed and shook his head, and told her to have a good night, and then left. She made sure that he walked out of the building and then immediately ran over to my unit to tell me about what had happened. I told her that I wanted her to report him anyways, and that they need to know that he was a creep. She agreed, but was hesitant at first, saying that he didn't really do anything. I mentioned that he may not have done anything this time or to her, but there was a real possibility that could change next time with the next person. That seemed to make her change her mind, and she said that she would go ahead and report him. The next morning, I went down to the office with her and informed them of the situation. They were a bit confused, since Jessica doesn't live here, but I told them that she was staying with me for a couple of days, and that she was helping me with my laundry, and that's why she was there. They seemed to be okay with that, and asked for more details. She told them everything, and the person that took our complaint seemed to take it seriously. They said that they would talk with him, and that they would take action, and apologized that it happened. We thought that that would be the end of it, 
that he would either get fired or that he would get the hint. But he didn't, and he didn't. About two days later, we were in my living room and heard a knock on the door. I get up to answer it, looking through the peephole and see Jeb just standing there. I stop and think about whether or not I should answer the door, but he knocks again and says, This is security. I need you to open the door. I sighed and did what he mentioned, keeping it chained just in case. As I opened the door, he actually ran into it. Like, physically bumped into the door. I'm guessing because he didn't expect me to have it chained and he was planning on just walking into the apartment. Once he regained his composure, I asked him if I could help him, and he immediately told me that I needed to open the door all the way. I told him that I didn't feel comfortable doing so, and he immediately got angry. He said, You need to open the door. I am with security, and I need to check your apartment. I stared at him blankly for a moment, and asked him why he would need to check my apartment. He responded with, I have reports there are people living in this unit that aren't supposed to be here, and aren't on the lease, and I want to check just to make sure. I once again just told him no, that he couldn't just enter my apartment at any time that he wanted, and that if they were going to send someone, then they needed to call me with 24 hours notice, according to my lease. He immediately raised his tone, saying, You're going to open this door right now, or you're going to be kicked out. I am here to check the apartment. It's an emergency. I kept up my questioning, asking what the emergency was, whose life or property was at risk, according to him. He tried to say something like, You may have a murderer in there hiding for all I know, so this is an emergency. I just shook my head and laughed at him, telling him that if he really thought that, then the office either needed to call me to talk to me, or he needed to contact the police and have them check out my apartment. I then moved to shut my door, and he reached his arm in and around the door trying to grab at the chain lock. I immediately shoved the door as hard as I could, and screamed saying that he was trying to break into my apartment, screaming for help, trying to get the attention of the neighbors. Thankfully, it worked, and I could hear several of the doors opening in the hallway, and people asking what was going on. I think he realized the implications, and he immediately pulled his arm back, and turned to walk away. As he was walking away, I heard him yell, Get back in your apartments, there's nothing to see here. Like, he wasn't just some security guard and had some kind of actual authority. Obviously, our neighbors came to my door and asked if we were okay and what was happening. We explained the whole thing to them and they agreed that everything he was doing was a problem, and that he definitely had something planned with what he was doing. I actually called the police to make a report, and when the cops came out, all of the neighbors corroborated what I was saying. They said that they would do a drive around to see if they could find him, and that they would be back with the police report for me to give to the office. Thankfully, this was the end of all this. We took the report to the office, and they told us that they had gotten calls from several neighbors in our building about the whole situation, and that they had let him go that morning, and that he was basically barred from the property. They also said they would assist in any way they could if the police wanted to pursue the investigation. As it is, I haven't seen him since this all happened, and I think he realized that he was treading shallow water, and that if he continued... He was going to end up in jail. In my opinion, he should have been arrested for what he did anyways, but I don't believe that he was. In the end, it was a terrifying situation, one that caused me to really not feel safe in my own home. The experience left me rattled, and I'm nervous anytime someone from the property has to come to my door, but thankfully nothing has happened since all of this played out.
back whenever I was around 19, so quite a while ago. I used to sling fries at a place that I don't want to name specifically, so we're just going to call it McBurger Queen. It was a fast food job, one that had me working around grease and oil for literally six hours a day. It was gross, slippery, and terrible for both my weight and my skin. For a broke college student that was doing their best, it was a paycheck, and nothing else. I hated every minute of it, but I did it long enough to be promoted once or twice, all the way up to a shift lead. Not a manager per se, but a lead. It meant that I had to delegate things while the managers sat on their back ends in the office. That said, it did pay for what I needed it to pay for, and as much as I loathed it, I kept it and tried my best to just get through it. Then came who I'll just call Mr. Creepshow. At first, he was just another 50-something overweight guy that liked to come in on Fridays, a slightly chubby dude with a taste for a double cheeseburger meal. At first, I hardly noticed him, but even when you don't work front, certain orders start to ring a bell. Double cheeseburger, no ketchup, add mayonnaise, extra pickle, and large, unsalted fries. Yes, I still remember what he would order, because after a while it was an order that I would come to hate. But initially it was just basic stuff. He'd come in, order, I'd get his food made and out onto the counter. It went from once a week to a few times a week, to literally every single shift that I worked. He went from ordering and sitting down, to ordering and then standing at the counter watching me make his food with this awkward grin on his face. When he sat down, he would sit at the closest table and would just stare as he ate. Innocent, yet creepy as hell. Then he started trying to talk to me. I would walk an order up, and he would be at the counter and try to get my attention. It would always start with him saying something was wrong with his order and ask that I fix it. But he would then try to squeeze in small talk about anything and everything. The weather, how my schooling was going. I made the mistake of once telling him that I was going to college. How work was going. Then the conversation started to swing towards things that he had no business asking. Not as a customer at a burger joint that I barely knew. One day, he asked me to come up to the counter, and he didn't have his food, so I didn't know what he was going to bother me with. I walked up, asked if I could help him, and he said, Yeah, you can. I'd like to take you out for coffee sometime. Would you like that? The way he asked it was so weird. Ending the sentence with, Would you like that, was such an awkward way to ask someone out. I told him that I appreciated the gesture, but that I was taken. He laughed and said something like, Oh, that's fine. I'm sure you have a bunch of guys after you with, uh, assets like that. I stared at him for a moment, and he seriously gave me the elevator eyes and smirked at me. At that point, I told him that he was making me feel really uncomfortable. He then responded with, How about I take you home and make you feel even more uncomfortable? I stepped back and told him in no uncertain words that what he was saying was not okay, and that I was going back to work, and that the conversation was over. After that shift was over, I spilled everything to my night manager, who gave me the go-ahead to boot Mr. Creepshow if he tried to talk to me about anything inappropriate again. But that was it. She didn't ask any questions, didn't ask for his name or what he looked like. She just said that it was my responsibility to take care of it until or unless he physically did something inappropriate. After that, I didn't see Mr. Creepshow for a week, so I thought that it was over, and that he had gotten the hint. Maybe he'd moved on to haunt some other poor girl in another fast food establishment. But then, 
when I walked into work one night, there he was. He was standing in the McBurger Queen manager's office, except he was in uniform. My stomach dropped as my night manager introduced him to me as David, and said that he was a new crew member, my new co-worker. I just gave a plastic smile and asked if I could talk to her alone, and she sent him off to the front to get used to things up there. I then told her that he was the guy, that he was the creep that I had told her about. She gave me this look that screamed that she didn't believe me at all, and dismissively said, No, you must be mistaken. David seems like an alright guy. I shook my head, and I told her that it was either him or me. That he had to go, or that I was going to go. She promised that she would work something out, and that I needed to just try to work with him. For a few days, I had to work with this guy, and I could just feel him staring at me. And of course, he worked every shift that I was working. Then, my manager told me that she had actually worked it out with our sister store to transfer him to their team, as they had more openings than we did. But, and of course there was a but, since he had applied and wanted to work at this location, if he wanted to come back here, he could make a call to corporate, and they would likely transfer him back. Basically, if Mr. Creepshow wanted to come back and ogle me some more, he was within his rights to do so as a McBurger Queen employee. So, I went ahead and gave her my two weeks notice right then and there and told her that him being away temporarily was not enough for me. She was disappointed, but she said that she understood. I just kept my head down and counted my shifts until it was my last one. On my second to last day, who would show up working at our store again but Mr. Creepshow? When he clocked in, he walked back to my station and said something like, So, I heard you're leaving. Can I go ahead and get your number now? I want to get to know you better, see what you've got going on. Again, he was giving me those sleazy elevator eyes. I snapped. I told him that I would rather dip my face in the fryer than ever see his face again. He just kept this big grin and watched me as I walked away from him to turn in my cap and name badge. I dropped them off, and I walked straight out that door. I did go back one time just to get my paycheck, and the whole time he was out mopping the lobby and was just staring at me. He gave me this gross little wave and a kissy face when I saw him, and I gave him the finger. After that, I never went back to that location. I've barely gone back to that specific chain of restaurants, and I hope more than anything that Mr. Creepshow choked on every chicken nugget he ate after that day. This happened a couple of years ago now. I was in an extremely unhealthy relationship at the time, and after one of my partner's fits of rage, I went out for a late night drive to clear my mind. I was 22 at the time, living in a small town in rural Alberta. Now, if you know anything about Alberta, you know that a lot of our residents are the redneck types, with huge jacked-up trucks, sporting massive aftermarket bumpers and headlights that can probably see clear to Mars. Now, I'm not a tiny girl. I grew up training in MMA, and I'm damn near six feet tall. But I drive a tiny silver sedan, so, me and my tiny car made our way out to the local fishing pond. It's also a bit of a lover's lane, but it was pretty much deserted at this time, aside from one other car in the parking lot. I pull in, hugging tight to the curb to put as much space as I can between myself and the other occupant of the lot. There's a chain guardrail thing to the immediate right of my car, as well as in front of me but I wanted to keep my splotchy face to myself while I texted my best friend about the fight that I'd just had with my partner. As I'm sitting in my car, 
doors locked and the ignition off, I see a vehicle coming down the road. It's important to note that this parking lot is at the top of a T intersection, and there's not much to do in my hometown other than drive around aimlessly, so I don't think much of it. That is, until the vehicle pulled in behind and slightly to the left of me, blocking my vehicle in. I was still upset and borderline ready to end myself anyway, so although it freaked me out, I didn't do anything about it. I just stayed in my seat, doors locked, texting my friend. After about 20 minutes of this, what I could now tell was a massive truck with an iron cross bumper, you can look it up, they're distinctive, and sitting behind me with its damn lights from hell shining in my car. They drove off. I paid no more attention to them, though. Once I felt calm enough to go back home, I started my car and went to put it in reverse. Remember how I said the lot that I was in was at the top of a T-intersection? Well, all of a sudden, these lights come on from just up the road behind me. I pull onto the crappy gravel road and start making my way back towards town, and the truck followed. I drove slowly and calmly, and they got so close behind me that they nearly clipped my car with their bumper. And they kept backing off and pulling in close again, like a cat playing with a mouse. I completely ignored them and continued to drive normally, until I made it to the turn into town where they decided to finally screw off in the other direction. I've never felt that kind of fear before, nor since. I'm not really sure what was going on or what their intentions were, and I don't really care, either. So, that, my friends, was this week's collection of stalker, stranger stories, however you want to look at it. A collection of stories where the scariest thing is the person right behind you. That's right. Look behind you. I'm right there, watching you. You smell nice from this distance. Hmm, that was a weird thing to say. Anyways, um, yeah, some scary stories. Hopefully you all enjoyed them. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button as it does help the video perform better as YouTube takes that as a uh, form of signal boosting, if you will. You can also do the thing where you uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new and liked what you heard. Um, if you didn't like what you heard, you probably won't subscribe, which, that's okay too. If you're not new and you've been listening to my stuff and you still aren't subscribed, please fix that. That's a, there's a not insignificant percentage of people who listen to my stuff consistently and are not subscribed, which is such a weird thing to me. I don't know. Anyways, uh, the other thing you can do is leave me a comment down below letting me know your thoughts, how you're doing. How your day is going, how your week is going, how you're feeling, etc., etc. Always, always up to hear how my listeners are doing. Yeah. Well, that said, friends. Oh, wait, no, sorry, the other thing. You can also join Patreon or memberships or get early access to content like this or other things, depending on what you sign up for. And you can also do a super thanks, which is just a tip to the channel, which is a bit of support, never expected, always appreciated. There we go. All that said, friends, I hope you're having a beautiful week and a beautiful day so far. And I hope I do see you again here very soon. But until then, remember you are loved, you are valid, you are important. Be the best you that you can be. Do not forget it and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And until next time, my friends, much love and sleep well. <laughs>